Hello and welcome to another video. So today we're taking a look at a sword deck. We haven't looked at hardly any sword decks because they haven't been very strong. This one is, I would say, average. It can hold its own in Masters, but you are going to get stomped by anything that is well optimized. So this deck is using a pretty standard neutral package for its early game draw power, along with a nice sword late game package, which I am running a triple the Triple Fang Blade Slayers and the Alduas Commands because they are both solid cards. I like the Commands because they curve out nicely on 6, you can combo off on turn 7 with any of your lower cards, especially if you're using Rabbit Ear to draw a lot of cards early, or you can just straight up play another 6 drop. The 8 drop Fang Blade is great for dealing with wards like Zeus, while at the same time being able to ping some damage. Most of your games are going to go off pretty early, where you'll either swarm the board and gain control, or you will use them to trade off and get into your late game drops. Of course, a dedicated control deck will pretty much defeat this, and an aggro deck has a good chance of beating you out if you don't have a decent hand. So, we're going to take a look at some games, and they'll go reasonably quickly, so hopefully you guys will enjoy it. So our first game here is against a Dragon player. I am running most of these through through ranked, so it is interesting to see. But this deck is definitely one of interest. It's got definitely got some potential to do well. It's just Sword is lacking that crucial either healing or just big threat that can close out a game easily compared to other classes, so it's a little hard. So you really want to curve out as much as you can, that's why I play Actress on 2 here. Of course it does become a target for that Breath of Salamander, but that's better than losing the Red Riding Hood, which has way too much value to lose. And against Dragon, you really want to put as much damage on the board as quickly as possible playing a sword. If you leave any room for error, they will take advantage of it and pretty much wreck you, so you really want to put that pressure down early. Now because we do have the ward and we do have three reds, it's safe to play one for some extra pressure, especially since we will be able to evolve next turn, which may give us the advantage of being able to kill something. Like I said, most of these games go reasonably quickly. So we are able to evolve this Red Riding Hood and trade and throw out an extra one for good measure because they're now going to have to target that evolve follower with something else. So the extra Red Riding Hood staying on board is always a good advantage to have. Especially since Council of the Card Knights can come down next turn if we need it so that we can play the evolve on the Red Riding Hood if it sticks on the board. But our opponent concedes obviously not having anything to deal with this on turn 5. Like I'd said in the beginning, most of these games are very, very quick. Just because Sword works on a very quick basis, and most opponents now realize better off conceding than dragging out the game. Of course, that won't work for every matchup, but the ones that you do end up just rolling on, it's pretty easy. So you can quite easily drop that goblin, turn one, always a good play. You don't really lose anything by playing Goblin turn 1. Rune is another class, you just want to go go hard and go fast, play on curve, get as much damage in as you can, and hope that they don't have something to completely massacre you. Lucky for me, being able to play 1, 2, 3 out is always solid, especially with Rabbit Ear, so a couple of draws. I always enjoy getting a couple of draws off the Rabbit Ear attendant. Plus the Vanguard, even on 4, is a solid card. Of course, you don't get its death like death effect, the last word, for summon 2 knights, but I'll settle for it as just a swing card to really put the pressure on the board. So the advantage of this deck is you're implementing the neutral engine for the draw power and for the card draw. That's where Unica and Rabbity are really good together. Plus, things like Grim Cyclone block out a nice amount of damage while at the same time giving you potential for AoE damage, another thing Sword lacks. So you're taking advantage of the good Sword cards while at the same time using the neutral package to just boost the deck that little bit it needs to stay relevant. Of course, this is still one of the weakest decks around at the moment. Honestly, every other class has at least some really viable deck, whereas Sword doesn't really have something that I would consider competitively viable. 
to the point where you could easily rank up with it. Of course, this does come reasonably close, though. A little blood won't stop me. So we do get that damage in quite nicely, putting them on 8. They do decide to try and kill me off, though. Unfortunately for me, I don't quite have enough here. The Aloys is going to be 7 with an Evolve, but that's still short by 1. I've just got to hope they can't clear this next turn. I honestly should have evolved the 3-2 because it would have forced them to evolve if they had Levi. Luckily they didn't, otherwise I would have been in some real trouble there. And the final game is against Forest. Forest is just one of those matchups. They'll either do better than you or you'll do better than them. Since you are quite aggressive, usually you can avoid the roach combos because you are just that fast. But sometimes you don't. So this is going to be a reasonably quick match though, so this video will be on the shorter side, but I did make a couple of longer videos recently, so hopefully that kind of makes up for it. Of course, Bellringer. Really odd to see in a forest deck, but that makes me think it's definitely going to be a neutral forest deck. Kindly Trent, not really any kind of threat. Can easily just remove this Bellringer. Throw out my own Grimnir, works as a nice little ward. And then from there, it's actually not going to be too difficult. I mean, we've got the double Genos, which are going to be a really solid play. Well, triple Geno, sorry. Eleven Vanguard, ram it, leaves us with a 4-1 body, forces them to have to remove it. If they can't, then we're going to just play out as much as we can. Not so lucky, Impartial Strix, just an annoying little card. And since Levin Vanguards aren't going to get their effect yet, I will hold on to them for now, use the neutrals that I've drawn, play them all out, use the Evolve, remove that, and just set the board up, hopefully to deal with Forest in the coming turn. So my opponents do tend to concede a lot of these games, I think because Sword is just like that. If Sword has a good hand and you have literally nothing to deal with it, you are going to get rolled by pretty much any storm that they can put out, and most people already know that. So we do get a nice trade, dealing with this, this trend here. And I can throw out some more damage if we need to, using the Knight to trade with that 2-2, just to remove it from the board so it's not a threat to anything else. And setting up for a really nice Luminous Mage next turn, provided we can get rid of one of these 1-1s. And Beauty and the Beast is perfect for that. I do need to find a way to remove it though, which makes things a little trickier. I do decide to remove this over just summoning the Actress, sorry, the Luminous and Evolving. I could have went with that route, but I decided not to and just decided to trade off and get the damage where I can. I don't know whether that was the right play or not. If I had have just went face, I would have been open to potential lethal from Roach, although Roach lethals can come out of nowhere anyway, so it's a little hard. I don't want to take the risk, because even a neutral forest deck will tend to run Roaches just as extra damage and trade fodder, so it is a risk to leave any big threats on the board like Beauty and the Beast. Although I do have quite a good hand here. With the Luminous Mage and its little follower, the Luminous Knight, we will be able to get the Evolve, clear the ward, and deal heaps of damage to their face, setting up for the Aldoa's Command to hopefully deal lethal in the following turns. All we will be short is, I'll have them down to 6 because I do want to remove their healing. The healing would make it even harder to clear them. If they cannot remove this or threaten it, it's going to be really difficult for them. And I don't think Hellblindy is going to be enough. That will need to be perfectly lined up, and unfortunately, they didn't quite get it, which landed in them conceding. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. This sword deck obviously isn't the strongest of every sword deck ever, but it seems to do okay in the current structure of the meta. It will get dominated if people start catching onto it at all. It's very easy to work out what it is, and once you know what cards 
are potentially in it, you could easily probably play around it. At the moment, you're catching people by surprise, which is why you can get a little lucky with this deck. So don't expect to beat, you know, super high level players with it, or just even meta decks. It is just going to be your average sword deck. So if you want to check us out, deck list will be in the description below. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe, and I will catch you guys next time. See ya.